that we were looking at stories and writing. So what I want to do is to tell you something about writing and group writing, which you have in a handout. And that group writing is on the wall. This is something that uh, these stories here are in English, and they were done by primary school, well, 12-year-olds, 12-year-olds in Italy. They were done by 12-year-olds in Italy. So there are mistakes, there are things like that. But the children wrote these stories in groups. So there would be a group like this, and a group like this, and a group like this. And you give them some pictures, or you give them some objects. And in their groups, they tell a story with the objects. So, for example, the first person over here would start telling the story with one of the, the objects. So she's got to hold up. What have you got in your hand? Okay, so the story is going to start with a pineapple, a piece of pineapple. Okay, so we're going to have a story with pineapple and a cup of tea, a packet of biscuits. So you have a story and everybody says you're going to make a story with the things at the table. Okay, so you talk for a while. And after a while, the teacher, you the teacher, you come around and you go to each, as you're walking around, you listen to what the students are doing. And then you think, okay, they're ready to write. So I'm going to give you a piece of paper to write. And the first person is going to start here, all right? That, don't, don't touch yet. I'm going to start here. Now, you know the story now, yes? Because you've been talking. Right, good. So she's going to write, she's going to start writing, but she doesn't have to think. She doesn't have to think, because the group are going to tell her what to write. So they say, and she writes the first thing, okay? If she can't remember how to spell, she asks, how do you how do you spell that? If she didn't hear, what does she say? Can you say, again. say it again? Good. Then she finishes writing and she gives it to the next person. And the next person has to write the next line of the story the same way. And then to the next person, and the next person, and the next person. Right. Okay, so do you want to get up and have a look or not? Yeah. Yes? Okay, very quickly. Okay, I give you one minute. <laughs> it's very, very adaptable. And it's wonderful because it gives everybody a chance to actually do something. And in the feedback, if you have a chance, this is one way. They put it on the wall and the students walk around and read. But you can also put it on the wall and the students stand underneath it. They can't read it, but what happens is you say, okay, you six have your story, can you start? And the first one starts the story to tell the story, and then the teacher claps hands, clap, clap, and the next person continues. Clap, clap, the next person continues. Because usually what happens when you have a group telling a story, it's always the strong person who gives the answers. Doing something like this means that the quiet ones speak. They have confidence. They don't speak first, they do lots of listening. And then they speak. And so they're feeling confident in the safe situation of a group. And the same thing when it comes to telling the story, they also feel confident because they don't have to tell the whole story and everybody is doing it together. Each person says something. And it's wonderful because then the class are listening. So you can make them listen by giving them some kind of a task.
they have to tell you uh, who the characters are in the story and what happens. <laughs>